morning and welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church in Galesburg. I am very happy that you have chosen to worship with us today, that you have chosen to take time to worship our risen Lord. I am glad that we have this opportunity to share in the love of Christ together. Would you please join me in the call to worship? As early followers of Jesus gathered for fellowship and worship, praying and singing and reading the scriptures, so we gather in our homes this morning. We read in Acts that the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. One heart, one soul. They shared everything, everything they owned, everything they had. God's grace was at work in them, powerfully at work within them all. There was not a needy person among them. May it be so for us as well, this day and always. Thank you. 
friends, this morning I light this candle in honor of each and every one of you, knowing that even as we are physically distant, we are still spiritually connected, connected in the love, the life, and the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. This flame connects each one of us. It is the flame, the divine spark, which burns within each of our hearts. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you to share peace with one another. Text a friend right now. Write a comment. Lift up a heart. Whatever it is, spread God's peace through all the earth. Our scripture reading today comes from verses 10 through 19. Hear now God's word. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hand on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. And then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. We continue talking about what it looks like to be a first century church in a 21st century world. And today's message is love the unlovable. Love the unlovable. See, one thing that the first century has in common with the 21st century, one thing that we as humans have never gotten rid of, is the desire to write people off, to say that they are not worthy, to say that there's no redemption for them, to say there is no bringing that person back from the brink. There is no help for them. There is no salvation for them. There is no way that that person could change. That person is always going to be the way that they are. It's human nature. It's a human trait that has not changed through the centuries. But what we learn from the first century church is how to start overcoming that trait. And today we see the story of Saul's transformation. Saul has been blinded on the road to Damascus in that very familiar story where he sees a vision of Jesus, and Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? And Saul is taken into Damascus and left at this house, and that's where our story picks up today. With Ananias, who is going to have to learn to love the unlovable Saul. He's going to have to learn to love and care for someone that he has actively feared and disliked and doesn't want anything to do with. And he does it because the Lord loves him first. So here Ananias is, and he's praying to the Lord, and he is worshiping God, and the Lord comes to him in a vision and says, Ananias.
this, guess what? Saul of Tarsus is here in Damascus right now. If you just go over to Straight Street and you look for Judas's house, maybe it's the third from the left after the butcher, who knows. But if you go and look for that house and you go over there and you see Judas, you'll find Saul of Damascus and Ananias, I need you to go and heal him. I need you to go and lay hands on Saul of Tarsus. And this was a name that every early Christian knew. Before he became the Apostle Paul, St. Paul, the great preacher and missionary to the Gentiles. He was Saul of Tarsus, enemy of all believers of Christ, persecutor, violent, zealot, intent on seeing every one of Christ's followers hurt, jailed, executed. He was not a man to be trifled with. He was not a man that you casually went over and saw, and Ananias says this to God. And this is why I love it, because Ananias shows us our humanity, because Ananias is going to have this conversation with Jesus and say, Lord, I've heard about this guy. He's terrible. There is no way I'm going over there. There is no way I'm going to go and possibly be persecuted by this guy who is sworn that he hates all Christ followers. There is no way. And Ananias is following it, falling into that trap that we fall into. We believe, we like to say that we believe that people can change. But what we really believe is that people who change still need to be watched. Oh, good job, you have overcome your trials and tribulations. Well done, you. I'm still watching you. Oh, good job, you have changed your life. You have turned it around. You are facing Christ. You are walking in the faith. I'm still looking, though. I'm still waiting for you to trip up and fall. That's the kind of attitude that we tend to project. This idea that we're going to love the unlovable, but we're still going to watch them real closely. And if they trip up, we're going to be there to point it out. Point out all of the faults and flaws. And this is something that connected our first century church with our 21st century church, is this idea that we needed to hold one another at a distance. To only trust a little bit. To only trust slightly. To let people in just enough. But here, the Lord is saying to Ananias, that's not enough. You can't just say, well, I'm sorry that he's gone blind. I hope that he gets better. I'll pray for him. I'll put him on my prayer list. But what God calls Ananias to do is to go and lay hands on Saul of Tarsus to treat him as a fellow believer, to be his teacher in the faith to be his mentor and his guide. This is way bigger than adding him to a prayer list. This is a life change. Because in order to love Saul of Tarsus, Ananias is going to have to face him. They're going to have to be eye to eye. Ananias is actually going to restore Saul's sight so they can look at one another and talk and pray together. Friends, loving the unlovable is not about putting up with people's nonsense. It's not about putting up with 
people's abuse. It's not about tolerating bad behavior, because we shouldn't. In fact, I think loving the unlovable means calling out bad behavior. But it also means recognizing that people really can change, that God can change people's hearts. It's about recognizing that we have been forgiven and others are also forgiven. It's about recognizing that when people are true and honest, they deserve love's embrace just as much as anyone else. And so Ananias goes. He goes to Judas's house over on Straight Street and he lays his hands on Saul. And Saul, and he says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus has sent me here so that you might see and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Brother Saul. Suddenly Saul isn't the great big Saul of Tarsus, persecutor of Christians. Suddenly, Saul is family. And you never give up on family. You keep on believing in them, even when they stumble. And I'm sure Ananias knew that Saul would stumble along the way, and Saul knows that he is going to stumble along the way. He is going to have his own trials. He's going to have his own issues that he has to deal with. He talks about a thorn in his side, a pain in his side. At one point, he talks about when he's writing a letter, Saul will say, oh, wow, look at how massive my handwriting is. And some scholars believe that it's because when he regained his sight, his vision never got back to 100%. He was never 20-20. He still was a little bit blurry. So he always had other people write his letters for him. So when he wrote for himself, his handwriting was massive so he could see it. He had his own demons to deal with. He'd be thrown into prison multiple times. He would ultimately be executed for his faith. But what Ananias learns is how to love the unlovable. Saul becomes brother. Saul becomes disciple. Saul becomes friend. And it is only when we open our hearts to one another, saying that we won't accept the bad. Saul is not allowed to persecute Ananias. That's off the table. But if we're real, if we're honest, if we really want to love, then all are welcome. And the unlovable those who we would rather push away, push aside, they have just as much place here too. I bet none of the early believers wanted Saul of Tarsus to be one of them. But he proves himself over and over again. And Ananias doesn't give up on him. Ananias goes and says, brother, and loves him. Not because he's done anything great, but because the Lord has commanded it. So who are you called to love? Who are you called to reach out to and say, brother, sister, beloved, you are welcome. You are loved. You are God's own, just as much as me. Who are you called to love? And how will you show them love this week?
go forth in love. Amen. Let us pray. You break in, O God, on the road. You break in, O God, exactly the way we do not believe. You break in, O God, and change everything. Why are your stories never mundane? Why can you not just leave us alone and go and transform somewhere else? That is not as certain, somewhere that is not as certain and sure of you. You just disrupt us and cause anxiety. We are not people of change. You break in, O oh God, with a call. You break in, O oh God, with an invitation. You break in, O oh God with the truth. Why do you wait for us to respond and never give up? Why do you speak into our souls the truth of how we live? Why do you keep goading us, provoking us, disturbing us with the truth? You break in, O oh God, with a new realm. You break in, O oh God, with a new world. You break in, O oh God, with your intent for the future. You always are a challenge to us, and we dream of that realm of yours that we speak of so often. But what disturbs us most is how you want to get there through us, your partners and companions, with space enough for everyone, even those who persecute you by doing nothing. God, break in again and call us to be your workers. God, break in again and use the gifts that we are to build your realm. God, break in again and change our world once more. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your love makes me sing, singing alleluia, alleluia. Your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising. I can feel it rising. All the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God song rising up in me. makes me sing, sing it, alleluia, 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 your love makes me sing, your love is amazing, steady and unchanging, your love is a mountain from beneath my feet, your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your love makes me sing, singing alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your love makes me sing. And keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Alleluia.
Amen.